Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be attempting to assemble the Woodland Mills blade sharpener. Uh, you know, every time you go to pay somebody else to sharpen the blades, it keeps adding up, adding up. So uh, I'm planning on hopefully cutting a lot of lumber this fall and this winter. So uh, it probably won't pay itself all back in one year, but hopefully over the course of two or three years, I'll actually be ahead of the game. Um, you have to put that money up front, of course, but uh, over the long run, I think you'll hopefully come out ahead. So anyways, uh, let's get started putting this together. Well, here is the box that it comes in. Open this up. Instruction manual, that will be important. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's kind of just in pieces right now. So uh, I'll get this stuff pulled out, read some instructions and uh, get started putting it together. So oh, here's the first step. It tells you what tools you're gonna need. A T20 Torx, an eight millimeter wrencher socket, a 10 millimeter wrencher socket and a pair of pliers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that pulled out right now and then move on to the second step. So the first thing that you have to do is determine how you want to mount it. Uh, it comes with the option of uh, assembling it onto a stand or directly to a workbench. Uh, I think for me, the best option is going to be to assemble the stand and use that. So um, having said that, go on to step number three. It uh, gives you a list of everything that you're going to need um, that comes in the box. So um, all the bolts, the legs and that that you need to pull out. So uh, I'm going to pull all that out now. Um, if you were just going to mount it on a bench, you skip this step completely and move to the next section. But I am putting it on the stand, so I'm going to pull all this stuff out and then uh, start going by the instructions of how to put it together. All right, so there's four upper legs and four lower legs, and you kind of just, you can probably see the two spots here that you line up to put them together with. And you just use the hardware that's supplied. There's your carriage bolt there, a washer, and a lock nut. And I'll just do the same thing there, and that'll be one leg put together. And then I just do that process four more times, and then I'll have my four legs all assembled. So just as I'm assembling, I'll just point out one little thing, and that is that uh, down here in the corner, you can probably see just how close those two carriage bolts come to each other. So uh, the first one I just put on with my normal uh, socket on the screwdriver there, no problem. But then the second one, as you can imagine, you cannot uh, get a socket fit in there very well. Um, so I just threaded it on by hand and uh, tightened it up with a wrench. Um, obviously not a big deal, but just thought I'd Mention that if you're gonna be uh, trying to assemble one of these, a little eight millimeter wrench will definitely come in handy for you. All right, so stands all put together, nothing too uh, complicated or too hard, uh, just a lot of bolting together. It was all pretty straightforward, so gonna continue on with the rest of it. So now we're going to attach the control box to the stand. Again, it's pretty simple. There's uh, slots here that the, uh, there's a couple hex bolts that they send you and there's holes in the stand. So you just come up through the stand and bolt this on like that. So again, pretty simple. You just gotta line it up and there, we're attached. So next thing in the instructions is pick out this, which is called the advancer and you just connect it here to the control arm and you grab one of the hex nuts and 
so I'll tighten that up. I'm assuming that's supposed to have some play in it for now. I think that might be what pushes the blade forward, so I'll just leave that. Okay, so it says snug the bolt, but do not over tighten. Well, I'd say that's snug, so I'm assuming this is supposed to be able to do that. Okay, so we've come around to the back side here, and you take the grinding head and this knob and washer that they gave you, and you can see right here that this knob just screws into there. And you tighten that up. All right. It also says to connect the motor wire to the wiring harness. So that would be that right there. Okay. All right, so next they want you to attach the grinding disc. This does come with it. And Not sure if I'll try to get you guys in there. There's just this here that loosens off. They call this a knurled nut. So you just take that off. Get the grinding disc. Then you're supposed to tighten this knurled nut back up, which is somewhat tricky when you have big fingers. Okay, finally. I don't know if it's just me, but that was one of the more difficult parts of this whole endeavor so far. Okay. So we have the depth adjustment rod and it just goes right in up in here and you thread it on. Now it does give you a measurement to kind of uh, start with, I'm assuming, and that is from the very bottom to the top of this bracket. It should be seven inches. And I'm at six and a half right now, so I'll adjust that. Six and five eighths. So I'll keep going. Six and three quarters. Might have to flip that up. Okay, I did not know it could go that way. But live and learn. Uh, I don't think it, I just don't think I had it tightened up enough. At six and seven eighths. There. Seven inches, so. I'll leave it there for now. If 
Finally, we get to make use of our T20 Torx bit and it is just to be used with this little self-tapping screw. And this is just like a grinding shield, I suppose, so you don't, a uh, little bit more protection so the sparks don't fly. And that is quite, there's quite a bit of pressure to get that to screw in there, but it is self-tapping, so. So now we've got our uh, support arms and we're gonna just fasten them. That's what these two slots on the back ended up being for. And from there we'll assemble what they call the adjustable outer support arm. So you take this here and grab this little guy and it just goes together like this. So basically these slots are for adjustment. They say is the first notch or the furthest up towards your bearing here would be for the HM122. The second one is for the HM126. The third one would be for the HM130. And I'm not sure what these other two are for, maybe uh, different types of sawmills. I have the HM126, so I'm going to use the recommended slot that they tell you to use for that. And you just line it up here in the slot and attach it again with your carriage bolt and nut and then of course I'll do the same thing to the other side that's what it looks like and then the idea is your blade will work its way through roll on this bearing and that's what your blade will sit on so now they want you to go ahead and hook your little alligator clips up to the battery. They also remind you to make sure that the actual machine's turned off first. And you just check that everything's turned off right on the top here. There's two toggle switches. One is for the grinder and the other for the advancer. So they are both in the stop position right now so i should be good to hook the clips up to my battery um, now we've been given a whetstone and a template and the idea behind this is that the grinding disc is flat and um, we're instructed to try to make it match the contour of the saw blade which is where the template comes in you use it to kind of gauge the shape you want it to the grinding disc to match the shape of this and right now it obviously doesn't it's completely square so you use this wet stone and the idea is you turn it on and you start grinding the blade down and uh, you do a little bit at a time and uh, as you get it ground down a bit more you start using this template just to see how close you are and the idea is once you get it ground down to be the same shape as this that should work to sharpen the blades with so oh that's surprisingly doing uh more than i thought it was i'm already pretty close so i'm gonna go in very small increments from here on out well i don't know how well it shows up on camera but i've got it as close to perfect as i think i'm gonna get it so i'm happy with that so now what we're doing is setting the hook angle of the blade on the back of the machine here. So you loosen this knob off. And 
and there's different little dents or indents there. Um, 7, 10, 14 degrees, that's what the presets are for. I am, uh, I have 10 degree blades that I'm going to sharpen first. So, there's a dent right there, and that's the one that I'm going to use. Alright, so it's time to install the blade, and the first thing they want you to do is to find where it's been welded. So bear with me. You have to find the weld is because they want you to have the weld just on this side of the advancer. So the idea behind that is where they made the weld uh, the teeth might be slightly a different distance apart. So if you start just on this side of the advancer, uh, you can go all the way around sharpening each tooth, knowing that they'll be exactly the same distance apart until you get back around to where the weld is. And then I think the idea is um, just right in the two teeth in between where the weld is, you could kind of just manually do those. So anyways, I've got this set up in the right spot. And now I got to see exactly how this is going to rest in here. Okay, so I had to do a little bit of finagling with it, but uh, I think we got her set up in the right place now so the blades in there and the next thing they want you to do is just to turn on the advancer and uh, see if it advances the blade or not All right, so I shut it down last night. It was getting just a little bit uh, dark in the garage here to see what I was doing, but I picked it up this morning. Um, I've just been playing around. There's basically just these two main adjustments on it. I played around with that for uh, a little bit of time this morning. Um, basically, this is your horizontal and this is your vertical. So you just play around with it. You play around with this one so that the grinding discs come right down and just kind of grind the edge of uh, each point there and then this sets your depth kind of thing so that um, when you get down to the bottom of what they call the gullet there you're just kind of brushing it as best as possible um, obviously this is the first blade I've ever sharpened so uh, I'm definitely no expert or even know what I'm doing <laughs> really but uh, I think I've got the idea here um i've also since put this thing on um once i got going so you can see um that's kind of where i started so i've almost done three quarters of a round and since it was my first blade i really just wanted to sit there and watch and see if it was you know how it was doing if there were any problems so i've got that far so i'm happy with that so i decided to Turn the camera back on and uh, show you guys what it's looking like um, now that I'm semi-confident that I can kind of stand back and let it do its thing. Um, this thing here, basically the idea is, um, I guess if you want to walk away and leave it, that once the blade gets all the way around, this part here, it'll just come in and shut the switches off for you. And uh, so I guess that's a good feature, but anyways, I'm going to turn it on, let you guys see how it's set up now.
Wow, that worked really good. So if you're not familiar with sharpening at all, you may have noticed that the sharpener was coming down the edge of the tooth there and then coming across what they call the gullet, the bottom part there a little bit. Um, like I was saying before, I'm not very proficient at this. I could probably do a better job, but you are supposed to even grind the bottom part here a bit. You're not supposed to come back up the backside of the next tooth, but you're just supposed to get in this bottom part a little bit. Um, the reason being they say that little, little minor cracks and fractures can occur there. So by grinding that off, you kind of grind any little chips or cracks out and that will prolong the life of your blade. So that's the reason why you're supposed to kind of try to get down the side of the tooth and the bottom a little bit if possible. So I'm sure that I can fine tune this a bit better, but that was my first blade I've ever sharpened, my first attempt. So I think that went pretty well. I guess the only real way to tell will be to get that on the sawmill and see how well it cuts. But anyways, guys, that's going to be everything for me today. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.